is always a date. All right, welcome to another one-on-one -on -one science lesson. In this lesson, I and Mr. N, my student, will be um, <coughs> doing sorry, we're doing investigating elements for periodic, uh, the periodic table. So elements investigation. Okay, Miss Ann, Mr. Ann, please continue. In this learning activity, we will further explore the periodic table and analyze the properties of common element and compound in detail. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, it's good to learn the first 20 elements. Periodic table of elements. <clears throat> okay, just a moment. Okay, I'm back. All right. Action. It all started with a Russian guy named Dmitry Medelev. <clears throat> the story is that the many people were working on the elements and they would try to they would try to arrange them. They were trying to yeah. arrange them into like a perfect order that some uh, something like a table that we can um, um, learn them and they can teach them better. And the thing is, many of them fail because there are exceptions. You know, there are many exceptions too. So Dmitry Mendeleev, uh, in his dream, it was weird. In his dream, uh, he can see that the elements they rearrange themselves in a perfect order. And then he saw that in his dream that it makes so much sense. So when he woke up, he copied, immediately copied that pattern down. And so we have the periodic table, I mean the primitive version. <clears throat> and later on when we found new elements, we added to the table, you know, based on middle left, um, primitive table, you know, original table. That's the story. Sounds really um, spiritual, you know, spiritual. Yeah. Because it sounds like God or the spirits help him in his uh, dream world, you know. <clears throat> the modern periodic table, table of elements. elements. In 1913, British scientist Henry Mosley discovered that he could measure the number of electrons <clears throat> in an atom using X-rays. There you go, this is a modern one, like our most recent one, because we found new elements uh, <clears throat> by practice or by lab uh, and, uh, analysis and synthesis, you know? Yeah. So new elements are made from like nuclear reactors or something like that. Unfortunately, they are very unstable. The modern periodic table of elements. In 1913, British scientist Henry Mosley, Mosley, Mosley. Mosley mm -hmm. discovered that he could measure the number of electrons in an atom using X-ray. Each element has the, an assigned atomic number based on the number of electrons in one atom of that element. When the element in the periodic table 
were rearranged according to atomic number rather than atomic weight, all the previous problem that Mendeleev experienced disappear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's take a closer look at oxygen element number eight. eight yeah. The, at the atomic number of oxygen is eight. This is the number of electron in one atom of oxygen. Its atom weight is 15.999. Mm -hmm. Round it to 16 for most purposes. Because it looks more beautiful. It's exactly like two times more than eight, you know. Yeah. It looks like a beautiful 16 number, you know. So why not? Round it to 16 for most purposes. This is the average weight of an atom of oxygen. The atomic weight is a measurement the total number of proton and neutron combined. Since atoms are on their own, neutral, the number of proton and electron is equal. So there are eight proton to find a number of neutron, take the atomic weight and subtract the atomic number 16 minus 8 equal 8. So there are 8 electron, 8 proton, and 8 neutron. Mm -hmm. Next, we will explore, explore how some... to use the periodic table. The periodic table. <laughs> mm. Using the periodic table. The atomic number proved to be more important than atomic weight in understanding how elements behave. The number of electrons determine an atom re reactivity. Since atoms usually have a neutral charge, the atomic number is the number of electrons in an atom, but also the number of protons. The atomic weight is the total number of proton and neutron in the nucleus in the nucleus nucleus of each atom of that element. A simple formula can that will help you calculate the number of neutron in one atom of a given element is number of neutrons, neutrons equal atomic mass minus atomic number. So atomic number basically is the um, the protons number. Atomic yeah. mass basically it's just proton and neutron. So it makes sense if you take like a proton and neutrons minus the number of proton, you will have of course the neutrons left, isn't it? Because yeah. atomic mass equal to proton and neutrons. Proton and neutrons, atomic mass, proton and neutrons, and minus atomic number is like proton only. So you have only neutrons left, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. the, the discovery of the atomic number led to the periodic, the periodic table as we see it today. The period table of elements. Using the periodic table. For the purpose of this class, the atomic mass should be rounded to the nearest whole number. For example, the atomic mass of Rin F is known, shown as 18998. Yeah. For this activity, the atomic mass of Lewin would be rounded to 19. Mm -hmm. Using any version of the periodic table, table print of digital. complete the following activity, you can use the interactive It means like for this one, table. you have to read it online, the periodic table. Of course, just use online the periodic table, it will be okay. Find Neon, okay, for example. <clears throat> uh, keep in mind, it's not fully accessible if you use a screen reader. So, um, basically, 
Are you using a MacBook? Yeah, yeah MacBook. Of course. Yeah, I mean. All right. So basically, you can switch between tabs. Like one tab, you you open a period table. Another tab is like uh, this one. But would it cause the share screen to stop? Oh. Would it? Yeah, it would. All right. So. Uh, it's better if I tell you what um, element it is. So it's neon, so... Find neon in the periodic table. Use neon, atomic mass, and atomic number to determine the number of... Listen, I think <clears throat> because you are sharing, I think because you are sharing only like uh, that page. So that's why when you switch page, it stops the share screen. What you need to do is to share the content of what is appearing on your skill screen, not just only that this page, okay? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, so stop the share screen and try to share only the thing that you see on the screen, not like a single page, you know? It's like a um, window, right? Well, what's there? What's there? Tell me. Or just entire screen. Entire screen. Okay. Just share the entire screen and then basically it will capture everything on the screen, not just the page itself. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now you can switch and then no problem. There you see. Now I understand why the problem uh, persists. You should do this one next time, okay? Share the, okay. Whole, the whole screen, the window and everything. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Nian. You do. So... So the neon is... Atomic mass is 20.180. You can run it up to 20, no? Probably can run it up to, uh, to 20. So, proton and electron are So be um, um, ten proton and ten electron. <clears throat> yep, and. Uh, Neutron is And neutron. Okay. Now, copy and complete the following table. The first row is completed as an example. Okay. So, let's see.
Copy the following to a completed tumbling table. The first row is completed as example. Oh, I knew this would happen. I mean, I knew it would come up. <laughs> yeah. So, average atom mass is 6, 6.94. Just say 7 then. Found it. Yeah. Uh, Seven, so seven, so okay. atomic number should be the atomic number of seven should be three, and electron is also three, proton three, and neutron is three. So the atomic uh, weight should be six. <clears throat> Yeah. You know why? Because electron is, is just basically too small and it's too insignificant in terms of weight. So that's why we don't count them in, when we calculate the whole mass of the whole atom, the whole atom, you know. Oh. Basically, the logic is that you have to combine all the three uh, things, proton, electron, and neutron, right? Yeah. But, because uh, proton and protons and neutrons are much more uh, heavier than electrons, or in other words, electron just too small, too tiny, too light. So it's so insignificant. That's why people do people don't uh, count them in when they calculate the mass, you know, atomic mass. Oh. Okay. All right. Continue, please. Nitrogen, so uh, nitrogen atomic weight should be fourteen. Round it up. Atomic number is seven. Electron seven, proton also seven, and neutron also seven. So basically 14 then. And yeah. The weights are 14. It's 14, 7, of course. 14, 7. 14, 7. Mm -hmm. Nah. Sodium. Sodium, yeah. Sodium should be. In most languages, it would be natri, natri, natrium, natria, or something like that. But I don't know in English, it's like sodium, it's so weird. You know, so, sodium, so, the S-O-D, means salt. Salt. Oh. That's where we get sodium from, salt. Sea salt, you know. Sea yeah. salt. So basically, it is sea salt that we get it, that we got the sodium from. So, it's N-A-C-L. NaCl, sodium, sodium chloride. That where we get this from. It's from sea salt. So we name the element sod, sodium. Yeah. Continue, please. So the atomic weight, weight should be twenty, twenty-three. And the atomic number should be um, eleven. Mm -hmm. And number of electrons eleven. Mm -hmm. Proton is eleven, and yes. neutrons also eleven. No, neutron is basically atomic weight minus number of proton, so it's twelve oh. this time. This time it's twelve. Neutron's 12 now. Oh, 12. Because 23 minus 11 is 12. Oh, yeah, it's an odd number. Okay. Aluminum. 
Atomic mass. Aluminum. Aluminum. In British English, we call it aluminium. In aluminium. Aluminium. In British English, aluminium. In British English, aluminium. But in American English, we say aluminum. Aluminium. 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 Mm-hmm. Aluminium. I mean, both right? ways are acceptable, of course. Um, so, the atomic mass should be 27. The atomic number should be 13. Number of electron is 13, proton 13, and neutron is 14. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right, I'll take a little bit break now. Yeah. All right, so I'll get back to it. Oh, why, why would you turn off your mic? Just share the window, please. Share the window. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so. You've been Is that good? Can you see it? Okay, you've been studying the elements. Now it's the uh, next part, chemical reaction. You've been studying the elements on the periodic table in detail. Now let's use this information to understand chemical reaction. Mm-hmm. Electron orbit around the nucleus at different energy level, or shell. Atom react with others atom. Because of the way the electron in the outer shell interact with the electron in the outer shell of other atoms. Doing a reaction, the atom either give up electron or add electron to their outer shell. When atoms gain or lose electron, they become ions. <coughs> Electron are negatively, negatively, negative, negatively, <laughs> sorry, negative, negatively, charged. negatively charged, negatively charged, negative, negatively charged, negatively charged. Let's do negative. it slowly, okay? Some words are just a tongue twister. Some are just tongue twister, you know. Ugh. Negatively charged. Negatively charged. Yes. So the atom can donate electron, become positive charge, and is known as a positive ion. The atom that accepts electron become neg- negatively charged and is, is known, known as, as a negative ion. A negative mm-hmm. a- ion. As you will see, birth. Bohr, Rutherford, Bohr, Rutherford, Bohr, Bohr, Rutherford, diagrams. Bohr, Rutherford, diagrams. Basically, it is two guys, two scientists. Name is Bohr, and another one is Rutherford. Rutherford, uh, Rutherford you know, sorry. Diagram, help us to visualize atoms and their electrons. Help us to visualize atom and their electron and to better understand chemical reaction. Ask yourself, how do you know which element will gain electron and which, which one, one will lose the reaction? In a reaction, how can you tell the number they will gain or lose? They lose. The answer lies in the number of electrons they have in an outer electron shells or valence shells basically you know because um, the reaction happens between the elements when the shells the, the electron in the shells react with each other you know so nothing happened in the uh, nucleus it's just like you know, the shells 
reacts, you know. So it's just a shell, which is the electrons that react with each other. But the uh, inner, the nucleus, which is the nuclear, the, the neutrons and the, elect the, pro uh, the protons, nothing happened, you know. So depending on how many electrons are there in the outermost shell or the outer electron shell, it determines whether they will gain or lose electrons in a chemical reaction. Let's continue. You will understand more. Predicting chemical reaction. Or Ruth the four diagram. Mm -hmm. These diagram initially proposed by Ernest Rutherford. Ernest Rutherford. They picked atoms and they are electrons. Take a look at the both Rutherford diagram for the following example. For sodium, you will notice that it has two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, and one in its outer. Shell for balance. Magnesium. How many balanced electrons are there in magnesium? It's just the uh, outermost, the, the one uh, like outer. The outermost. Like these? So two, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the outermost shell. So two electrons in the outermost shell. So two valent electrons. It means two electrons, that two electrons are available for reaction. Mm -hmm. Aluminum. Okay. <clears throat> How many balanced electrons are there in aluminum? So it's like... One, two, three, three... A very interesting thing happened when you observe the number of balanced electrons in each group. Sodium is in group 1 and it has one balanced electron. Magnesium is in group 2 and it has two balanced electrons. <coughs> Aluminium is in group 13 and it has three balanced electrons. In fact, this pattern is visible in group 1, 2, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Rules of 8. Most electron cell can hold a maximum of 8 electrons. The exception is the first shell, which can, only be, which can hold only 2. Atoms always want to have their balanced shell completely filled with electrons. When a balanced shell is complete, an atom is stable and therefore unreactive. There are two ways in which an atom reacts to become stable. It either adds enough electrons to bring its total up to 8, or it loses enough electrons to empty its outer shell. Once the outer shell is empty, the shell be below becomes the balance shell and it's already filled the two capacity. Since the electron in the balance shell are so important, they are giving their own name, valence electrons. Balanced electron in different atoms. Sodium has two balanced electrons. Magnesium has two valence electrons. Aluminum has three valence electrons. And silicone has four valence electrons. Sodium, one. Magnesium, second. Aluminum. Silicon. There you go. That's what I told you to remember the first 20 elements. 
So uh, basically calcium and uh, potassium also should be learned too. But here they only say 18. Hmm. Nineteen potassium. Potassium. Just another shell. would have two electrons in your most shell. Be like four. Element twenty calcium. Someone was calling you. <clears throat> so Calcium, wood, and we have two electron. No more. In the most uh, eight electrons in the 
next to to Michelle and to on the uh shell. Groups in the periodic table. In the previous section, we explore how to use the information in the periodic table to predict chemical reaction in this section. We will learn how the different elements are grouped in the table. Choose one of two options below. Watch the video or read the article and complete the self check activity. This is video. <laughs> It's nice, I'm, you know, you have a thing to write on the screen, isn't it? Oh, uh, what? It's nice that you have a thing to share the screen. I mean, you can write on the screen too. Oh wait, it's just it's just a <laughs> a video. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's just yeah. a video. Okay, uh, I think for the next lesson, because we learn uh, chemical reactions, I need to use my iPad. And I need oh, to use okay. my. Uh, I need to share the screen, and I will write on the iPad. So you can see the chemical reactions and everything. You know. Oh. Okay. So maybe for tomorrow, yeah. What's that? You know what? If you want me to see it, you have to press. You have to click on like um, moment. When you share screen, you click on like the little arrow button, and then um, you click on sh uh, share sound, and then uh, okay, okay, the green button Let share screen. Add. Okay, on the green button share screen, you have to click on the little arrow next to it and you choose share sound okay okay wait you see it okay um but that will mute me instead so just i can do that like for example like for example this one okay i'm sharing my screen now so um 
So basically, I'm sharing my screen now. There's a three dot button. They say more, right? Dot dot dot. A three dot button. They say more. Yeah, yeah. You see it? Click on it, and then choose share sound. And then uh, I can click on the three dot button again, and then choose um, select sharing sound mode. I choose stereo, high fidelity. And uh, so all the sound from your side will come to me like uh, very clearly. You see it now? Yeah. yeah. All right, do it again. Because only one person can uh, can share it at one time. So can you share it and then try to share sound that way? <clears throat> okay, you share. And then share sound too. And then click on that again, and then uh, share high fidelity HD or something like that. So. Wait, why is it so different in your yeah, MacBook? It's, Mac. it's just a MacBook. Weird. Okay, never mind. Never mind that. Maybe it's just different um, operating system. Zoom work differently, you know. <clears throat> never mind that. Wait, hold on, hold on. Okay, try again. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, yeah, now very clearly. Periodic table. Now, in a, a very simple way to think about groups is that they just are the columns of the periodic table. And a standard convention is to number them. This is the first column, so that's group one, second column. Third group, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, group nine, group ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. And I know some of y'all might be thinking, what about these F block elements over here? If we were to properly do the periodic table, we would shift all of these, the everything from the D block and P block all rightwards and, and make room for these F block elements, but the convention is, is that we don't number them. But what's interesting, why do we go through the trouble about calling one of these columns, about calling these columns a group? Well, this is what's interesting about the periodic table, is that all of the elements in the column, for the most part, and there's tons of exceptions, but for the most part, the elements in the column have very, very, very similar properties. And that's because the elements in a column or the elements in a group tend to have the same number of electrons in their outermost shell. They tend to have the same number of valence electrons. And valence electrons and electrons in the outermost shell, they tend to coincide, although there's a slightly different variation. The valence electrons, these are the, react, the electrons that are going to react, while the, which tend to be the outermost shell electrons, but there are there are exceptions to that, and actually there's actually a, a lot of interesting exceptions that happen in the transition metals in the D block. But we're not going to go into those details. Let's just think a little bit about some of the, the, the groups that you will hear about and, and why they react in very similar ways. So if we go at group one, group one, and hydrogen is a little bit of a, of a strange character because hydrogen isn't trying to get to eight valence electrons. Hydrogen in that first shell just wants to get to two valence electrons, so like helium. Two or eight are the, and so uh, hydrogen... The magic number. So two and eight as the magic number. It makes the, uh, it makes the um, atom more stable. And basically, atoms, they will try to become more stable. So they will try to get to, to a two or either eight electrons in the outermost shell to be stable, you know. That's a natural tendency, two or eight. Okay, continue, please. Is, is kind of it's 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 not it's not, it's not it doesn't share as much in common with everything else in group one as you might expect for say all of the things in, in group two group one if you put hydrogen aside these are referred to as the alkali metals and hydrogen is not considered an alkali metal so these right over here are the alkali alkali metals now, why do all of these have very similar reactions? Why do they have very similar properties? Well, to think about that, you just have to think about their electron configurations. So, for example, the electron configuration for lithium is going to be the same as the electron configuration of, the, of helium. 
of helium. Oh, this one is a bit too uh, advanced now. To okay, let, let's just go back to what we're we doing uh, because this one's electron configuration. It's a later part, more advanced part, you know. Okay. Okay, let's come back to what we're doing now. <clears throat> okay. So check. For each description, select a corresponding element from the drop down menu. Very reactive when pure. This element is useful to preserve food. Groups in the periodic table. The vertical column identify groups on the periodic table. <coughs> Elements in the group are very are special because they share similarity similar properties. In this part of the lesson, you will examine four important groups. Alkali metal group one, Alkali nerve metal group two, halogen group seventeen, noble gases groups eighteen, which are inherited elements. You will notice from the periodic table or shown here that each group are. On either end of the periodic table, alkali metal and the alkali earth metal on the left, and halogen noble gases on the right. Lucky metals, silver, shiny, and soft. Their reaction with other elements, however, are not as strong as those of the alkalis metal. Calcium Ca is one of the most familiar alkali me earth metal. Alkali metals. Alkali earth metal. Alkali. Alkali. Oh, alkaline, alkaline, alkaline earth metal. Alkaline earth metal. Because basically, when you put them into water, they become alkaline solution. So it's the opposite of acidic, you know, acid, acidic. Alkaline is the opposite of acidic. So basically, when you put these metal into water, they become quickly they become alkaline solution. So that's why they call we call it alkaline metal and alkaline earth metal. And why is it alkaline earth? Because we can find these elements mostly in the earth, you know, inside of the earth, like ores, or when you dig it up, you find you find it. Okay. Halogen. <clears throat> Alkaline metal are in group one of the periodic ta table. All alkali metals are generally silver. Silver, shiny, and highly reactive. As a safety per 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 precaution, pure alkali metal are often stored in mineral oil. 
They are oh, soft yeah. enough oh, yeah. to cut with a butter knife. Because they are so reactive. So we saw a video about it already last time, you remember? Yeah. Potassium. Yeah. So we have to store them inside like mineral oil so they won't react with even the air inside, you know, the air inside the bottle. <coughs> Compared to other metals, they are they have a low density and have low melting and boiling point. The alkaline metal you are alkaline. probably alkaline metal. Alkaline. You are alkaline, 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 alkaline metal. You mm -hmm. Who are probably most familiar with is sodium and a although you rarely see it is pure metallic <coughs> form pure metallic forms metallic sodium is very reactive it can even it's explode like when you put in water they just it's like a it's like when you run around like water and then it bursts into flame because it's so reactive so basically in nature you can only find like sodium oxide sodium carbonate sodium something but not like sodium pure metallic form you know because it already been reacted you know when something is so reactive it react with every little things around it so the pure form of that metal alone will not exist you know you know what it means Bit. Are you sure? You sure you know you understand the logic here? It's a bit. It's a little. It's like when someone so something is too reactive, they just changes. They just changes. Because when it react, you change. So you are no longer pure metallic form. Like there's something different. That's what it means. <clears throat> Pyramid it can even explode if it's placed in water. Well. Halogen are in group seventeen. This is the only group that include element in all three state of matters. For example, at room temperature, furion and coralline are gases. Rhombine VR is a liquid and iodine I and astatine are solid. All of them are highly reactive and many are found in living or organisms. Mm -hmm. In their pure form, halogen can be harmful or even fake, even lethal. Alkaline earth metal. Mm -hmm. Alkaline earth metal are in group two of the periodic table, like the alkali the metal, they are okay. noble gases, inert elements, noble gases, the noble or in inert gases are in group 18 they do not react with other elements all noble gases are very similar they are all odorless colorless tasteless and don't burn easily other non-metal and metalloy non-metal are this true over several group in the periodic table all the halogen and noble gas are non-metal. 
The remaining non-metal are found in parts of group 14, 15, and 16. They include carbine, nitrogen, oxygen, sporus, and sulfur. This group of non-metal is very important in biology because because it includes the elements of, that all living things are made of. Of course, the C, N, O, and then hydrogen. These four, C, N, O, H. Everything is made out of these four because everything organic, everything living things is made out of these four elements. You will learn it later. So that's why these four are the most important for biology. Metalloids are also a cluster of elements found across several groups. Metalloids are hard to classify because they lie between the metal and non-metal. The metalloids are silicon, arsenic, AS, <laughs> and terium. Te. The property of metalloid make them useful in semiconductor and in producing class. Okay, thank you. Okay, reactivity of alkali metal. <clears throat> so there's a trend, there's a trend for everything. Okay, so after this one, um, reminds me so I can send you one of my video. I mean, my one of my previous videos, so you can understand and um, review these things better. Remember to tell me, okay? Okay. Okay. One of the one of the group that we explored earlier was the alkali metal group group one in the periodic table. 
In this section, we learn how these metal react. Lithium, sodium, and potassium are alkali metal and have one electron, each in their valence shell. Does it mean they will react in a similar manner? Uh -huh. Not necessarily. Did you notice how the number of electrons shall increase as you went down the group? Lithium has two shell, sodium has three, and potassium has four. Does this have any effect on how they react? Does this have any effect on how they react? Yes, yeah, yeah. Does Interaction between the balance electron and nucleus. The balance shell is the electron shell farthest away from the nucleus. When there are more shell, the balance shell is farther away. Thus, an increase in distance of balance. Electrons from the nucleus affect the reactivity. As you've seen, opposite charge attract each other. That means the positive proton in the nucleus attract the negative. Negative electron that orbits the nucleus. As the number of shell increases, the distance between the valence shell and the nucleus increases. For example, the valence shell lithium is closer to its nucleus than the valence shell of sodium because sodium has more valence shell. Take a moment and think about how the distance of the valence shell from the nucleus will affect how much the how much the nucleus hold on to its valence electron. If you think that the nucleus hold on to the electron that are closer to it more tightly, you are correct. Now think about how this might affect the reactivity of each of the three electron metal we have. Yeah, you may dive in for L, I, and A, and K. If you were to arrange them in order, at least a reactive to most reactive, what would the order be?
Okay, what are you doing now, Timothy? Share? No, what? No, what? Oh, you're not sharing your screen. I mean, oh, sorry. you're sharing your screen, but let's come back to period table, shall we? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Investigating alkali metals. Okay, activity chemical reaction for alkali metals. Okay. Chemistry. Reactivity refers to how quickly reactivity refers to how quickly strongly things react. In this activity, you will observe how the reactivity of elements react. There is as you go down group across the period. Yeah, the metal were chosen as test material, but they are generally very reactive. Read the sentence, I think.
Transferable skills. Of course, transferable skills mean like you learn these skills, you can use it for other things too, not just chemistry. Your mm. microphone? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. All right, you still there. Okay, good. <clears throat> it's previous it's you learning throughout this unit. Dress, transferable skill development perspective. What transfer skill skill have you experienced? What happens suppose?
All right, are you still reading this? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. yeah sorry. Okay. All right, I think maybe uh, maybe it's time because you've been focusing on this for too long, maybe. Okay, so let's stop the lesson here. Okay, that's the end of my videos. Please like, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and press on the bell button next to the subscribe button so you can get notified about my new uploads, okay? You can also follow, press follow my Facebook, but please don't add me on Facebook as friends, okay? Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi nha. Các bạn hãy nhấn vào like, chia sẻ video này bạn bè các bạn. Nhấn vào nút đăng ký kênh YouTube mình và nút cái chuông kế bên cạnh để đăng ký kênh đó, để mà các bạn có thể được thông báo về những video mới nha. Các bạn cũng có thể nhấn vào nút theo dõi Facebook mình nhưng nhớ đừng kết bạn Facebook mình nha. Thank you and see you. Bye.